come on, Lego. Why do you have to keep on making videos about this guy? This is literally the third one you have made. You made the video talking about him going over to the Kings. You made the video with Philippe Deneau talking about why the Kings did it. Now you're talking about him again? What's going on here? Please, come on, man. He's the best defenseman of all time of my favorite hockey team. How will I not have somewhat of an emotional connection to his departure over here? Let's talk today about Alex Edler and pretty much give his final sentiments towards the Vancouver Canucks as he heads over to LA and plays what is going to be his, what, 16th season in the NHL? and 15th full season in the National Hockey League? Yeah, something like that. He's been in Vancouver for a very, very long time. And even Dave Pratt, you know, you remember Dave Pratt, right? Everybody knows in the Vancouver sports talk scene who Dave Pratt is. He posted this poll on Twitter earlier today asking who is going to be the weirdest one to see return to Vancouver in an NHL jersey that is not the Orca. Edler Kings, Erickson Coyotes, Holtby Stars, and Schmidt, and the Jets, and the overwhelming majority, 88.5%, say Edler with the Kings is going to be the weirdest one. That's over 86%. That's an A right there. If you're in BC, that's an A. So, for Alex Edler, having the LA Kings label attached to him now, it is strange. And I wanted to refer your attention over to this article here on TVA Sports from the QMI agency posted yesterday talking about Alex Edler and the comments that he made on a Sportsnet interview that pretty much just encapsulate his remaining thoughts with Vancouver wrapping up this part of his career and heading over to the City of Angels. Let's take a look at the quotes over here. This is from the article right here. It says, It will definitely be weird, said Edler in an interview with Sportsnet. I've been here in Vancouver for my whole career. I don't know anything else. It'll be even more bizarre when I come back to Vancouver. Being in Sweden now, I feel like I'm far away from everything. So I don't yet realize that I'm not coming back to the Canucks and going through something new. That's actually a pretty interesting thing right there that I kind of got my attention grabbed by in this first little paragraph here. The fact that Edler is actually in Sweden, most likely with the family and doing his things over there. We did note that Edler was one of the only Vancouver Canucks, I think it was just him and Tanev, back in March of 2020, who stayed in Vancouver when the pandemic initially hit. If I'm not mistaken, every other Vancouver Canuck went back home. Petey went to Sweden, Hughes went back over to Michigan or wherever it is that he lives, Horvat went back to Ontario, Brock to Minnesota. We had all the guys just go back home except for Edler Tanev, who stuck around here. Obviously, you had, like, Stetcher stick around here, too, because he's from Richmond, but pretty much it was Edler Tanev sticking around here, and now... Taking a look at the 2021 offseason, hey, he's back home. So a different way that he spent his summer this year compared to last year. But yeah, being in Vancouver, eh? The last time he was here in Vancouver, which was at the end of the 2021 season, was the last time he will be in Vancouver, if you know what I mean. The next time he'll be in Vancouver, he's going to be a member of the LA Kings. It's going to most likely be in December, and he'll be playing against the Pedersons and the Bessers and all the guys that he had pretty much just seen assimilate into the Vancouver Canucks. This is what it says in the article right here. The 15-year veteran has revealed he could have been back with the Vancouver Canucks, but their offer was just not to his liking. I have no bad feelings about Vancouver, Edler said. I've spent so many wonderful years here, I have so much to thank the team for, and I understand this is a business. It all depends on the club's situation, what it can offer a player, and a role that he will have. The decision was mine. However, I believe it's time for me and my family to experience something new. As a hockey player, I wanted to try something else. And this is the same kind of sentiment that we had from the agent a few weeks ago, that the Vancouver Canucks offer to Edler wasn't bad, it wasn't insulting, it wasn't, you know, laughable. Edler just wanted to go elsewhere. And that's kind of why, you know, a lot of Canucks fans might be pretty sad about this. I know I personally am somewhat, you know, not happy about it, but it's not like... It's something out of Benning's control. Even if Benning went out there, offered this guy the moon and more, who knows if Edler would have said, okay, well, I just kind of don't want to be here anymore. 
Okay, maybe if they offered him like $10 million, he probably would have signed, but I don't know. That's not what I'm talking about. Realistic offers here. That's kind of what I'm referring to in this respect over here. Going back to the interview, though, Edler says that he needed the change. I think the last season maybe helped my decision making because it was not as pleasant. It was a different year, there were no supporters, and there was a pandemic. And you know what? That definitely does play into it as well. You know, as we said, there are previous interviews where it was like, yeah, the entire year it was really bad. Like the Vancouver Canucks in 2021 were a bad team and the performances were not to be desired once more ever again. Nate Schmidt had a really bad falling out with the team. Alex Edler looked at this season and he was like, yeah, it is kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. I got to get out of here. So getting that newer opportunity with an LA Kings team that is going to give him a pretty good chance to show off his value I've been saying it the entire time, but good for him. This is what Edler says about the LA Kings and the entire role that he's going to be getting with that club. I wasn't in a position where I could choose to go play for any team I wanted, said the defender. There was interest from a few teams. I chose LA because they showed me a lot of interest, offered me a big role, and asked me to play mentors for their young defenders. They wanted me and believe in me. It's enormous. It's also a family decision. And you know what, that last part though, I really do think there is some truth to that. Family does play a huge part of these things, especially when you're in your mid-30s, but when you're going out there and saying, okay, well, papa, daddy, whatever you call your father in your household, he's got a new team. We have to move. We're going to another city in North America. Going from Vancouver to LA certainly isn't the most difficult process in the world, you know? Like, it would have been different, no disrespect, if you said, okay, we're going over to Colorado, or we're going over to Columbus, we're going over to Nashville, Tennessee. It's different, isn't it? But Vancouver to LA is, honestly, in my opinion, one of the more seamless transitions. I think Vancouver, New York would be like the best, but that's just kind of because New York kind of mirrors the Vancouver on-street lifestyle, where it's always go, 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 go all the time. Going over to LA gives you an opportunity to finally relax and say, okay, cool, there's a lot of space. Not everything's so jam-packed tightly like Vancouver or New York would be. So, family decision? I could totally understand that. And also, the young defender thing, I think it does make a whole bunch of sense there, because as we've noted, the Kings have a lot of young defenders, like Clegg, Bjorn Fott, Dursey, all these guys are going to be here and really looking to become good NHL players down the line. Sure, you have Drew Doughty there as a veteran presence, but getting on an Alex Edler to help out with big minutes and big roles, getting that leadership experience from a guy who knows what it takes to make it to the finals alongside of a guy like Doughty, who knows what it takes to win several Stanley Cups, these defenders in LA are going to have a lot to learn from. And I know you could say, oh, but the same could be said about Vancouver because Yolevi and Rathbone and Hughes. When it comes to Quinn Hughes, I mean, he's got Luke Shen back. That's going to be pretty good, I think. Yolevi, Rathbone, I mean, Yolevi's been exposed to Edler for years, so I'm not really too sure if that's the most damaged relationship over there. Same with Jack Rathbone. I mean, these guys were drafted in 2016, 2017. They've been attending the Vancouver Canucks camp since then. Edler has been on the Canucks camp since then. It's been four years of having guidance under that guy. And who even knows if it's going into the long term as well, because Yolevi still played with Edler for a good chunk of last season and this season. Now you have yourselves Edler going over to LA for one year only to treat the other guys over there in that system. So it does kind of make sense, and for Edler to be super honest about it in a sports interview is indeed a placating medium, I guess, to ease the minds of Vancouver Canucks fans and to leave no stone unturned. Because unlike Nate Schmidt, where everything just kind of fell apart and we don't really have a good conclusion to that that is in the media, that is on the record or whatever, with Edler, it's like, yeah, I could have come back, but I didn't. I'm here, I wanted to get a new role, and last season was bad, so I want to take my family somewhere else where things are cool, like L.A. And now he's over there. So talk to me in the comments what you think, L.A. Kings fans and Vancouver Canucks fans, about Alex Edler and his final departing comments from the Vancouver Canucks. I know a lot of Kings fans have been saying that I'm like a closet Kings fan, and maybe that's true. Maybe the Kings are my fourth favorite team, but you know what? I'm a big Alex Edler fan. Even though I did kind of make videos over the past four years talking smack about this guy whenever he wouldn't pass it to Besser on the power play or whenever he would get turnstiled. Yeah, it wasn't really the best. I mean, okay, look, individual plays come and go, but the legacy, the impact, the long-term amount of time invested into an organization, that stays for a while. So, LA, 
treat the number one defenseman in games played, points, goals, and assists with kindness. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, Shrolls and I and I. Talk to me in the comments, by the way, what you think. And bye.